Hello and welcome to the Ferret Business Podcast. I am your host, Yemi the Ferret, a.k.a. Yemi. And with me today, I am excited to bring you one of my favorite small YouTube community peeps. She reenacts shitty fan fictions from Markiplier to Jacob Santoris. She also vlogs and has a... She's a big fan of anime. I welcome to the podcast the one and only Flower Gothic. How are you today? How do you do? I'm doing well. I'm still recovering a bit from work, but I'm doing well. Well, that is that is good. Recovering from work. Uh, is that a daily thing or is that just like a, today was just a worse day than usual? Well, today was most definitely busier than usual. Last half hour of my shift, we had to we had like a 27 person church youth group they all ordered large drinks we all had to like assembly line make them the um chaperone didn't tip us because oh. he thought we took tips from debit cards which we don't okay well i guess i guess that's not as bad as him just being like nah i'm not gonna tip anybody yeah i mean at least he at least his heart was in the right place i'll give him that <laughs> <laughs> So, what what uh, what line of work are you doing right now? Um, I'm currently in. I currently work for a popular fast food chain. Not going to say the actual name. That's fine. Just so people won't find me. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is quite all right. Understandable. <laughs> I used I used to personally. I I worked at McDonald's for about two years of my life. And uh, that was that was not fun. I mean, it was kind of fun at the beginning because all my friends were there, but then they all started going to college, and I was like, well, uh, I don't want to be a manager, and I sure as hell don't want to keep redoing the fry vats because they put me on maintenance at the end. So I was like, well, I'm out. <laughs> See ya. Yeah, I, I don't blame you at all. <laughs> is this your first job, or has it, have you had a few before? Um, this is my second job. I worked for a, I worked for another like fast food place, which is a smaller business, and I'm not going to say the name again. <laughs> before, <laughs> That's all right. but it wasn't as fun because they were really, really stingy about like keeping everything nice and orderly, and it's like, um, there's like a line of people circling the block. You really think we're going to keep this nice and organized. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, do you have any plans for the future yet? Or, um, I think, didn't you, did you graduate from uh, high school yet? Yeah, I graduated on June the 9th. That's right, and I, I now. And in um, August, I'm moving to California for college. California. Oh, nice. Uh, it, what, what field are you planning on going into? Or what, what are you trying to study? Um, I'm kind of in between a few things right now. I don't decide my major until my sophomore year, so that's good. Oh, yeah. But at the moment, I'm kindly into, like, either foreign language or psychology. And I do believe that you speak Japanese, correct? I do. I took Japanese for four years at my high school. It was, it was a blast. <laughs> so you're pretty fluent in it, then. I'd say I have the fluency of, like, a six-year-old. <laughs> okay. Well, that's more than me, so... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, t I took three years of German, and ich um, spreche ein bisschen, but not very much. <laughs> yeah. So, you're above me in the language department, that's for sure. Yeah. I imagine you know more German than me, though, because, like, my only exposure to German were my friends that took the German classes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I had a huge crutch when I was in Ger in, in German class. I, uh, I, w I sat next to my two friends and they were I was always with them in groups. So I didn't really learn as well as I probably could have, <laughs> to be honest yeah. with you. I was kind of just copying what they were doing and I was like, oh, I guess that makes sense. And then the test would come around and be like, oh, crap. I don't know what that is. <laughs> so I mean, the thing... I mean, the thing about the first two years of Japanese at the school I went to was that a lot of the um, students were people who thought, oh, it's going to be like the animes, which <laughs> let's just say that less than half of the people that start on Japanese finish off in year four. 
Oof. Yeah, I, I'd imagine that. It's, it's got to be a tough language. Was it was it hard for you to learn, or did you kind of catch on pretty quickly? It really depended on exactly what part of Japanese I was learning. Like, learning, like, the whole phonetical alphabet is not too difficult, because, again, it's phonetic, so... Right. Pretty straightforward. And then there's, like, the kanji... Some of them look very similar, and I need to know all of I need to know like 400 characters, like Ooh. by my senior year. Oh my gosh. And I, I can't write them because like, we just need to like recognize them, but that was, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Where did your love of anime and Japanese culture uh, start? Oh, geez. Um, I, I've i kind of always, as long as I can remember, had at least some interest in Japanese culture. Like, I remember when I was in, like, second or third grade, borrowing a book from my school library about Japanese culture. And I was like, oh, wow. These people look so happy with all their, and I and I thought like, oh, the architecture is beautiful, the um, the whole like traditional dress is beautiful, mm-hmm. but I didn't necessarily start getting into manga until I was ten when I picked up what I think now is one of the um, worst mangas to um, start off your collection with. Uh oh. Where let me let me actually like. I think I still have it somewhere. Let me check real quick. Sure. (laughs) Okay, here it is. It's called Alice in the Country of Hearts. It's from this visual novel company. And what it's basically about is that a man with rabbit ears kidnaps Alice (laughs) and everyone in Wonderland's in love with her. Oh, seems, seems reasonable. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, reasonable for a 10-year-old. <laughs> yeah, I remember... But... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, oh, no, you, you can you can finish. Okay. I I remember the first ev- a piece of manga ever... I'm not a huge... You know, I'm not an anime fan or a manga fan, but I remember when I was a kid, I lived in the middle of nowhere in Ohio, and there was a library there, and I, I was looking through the books, and there was a Pokemon book, but it, it was a manga, and I didn't know it, so I read the whole thing backwards when I was a kid. <laughs> And I was like, this isn't making much sense. And then I realized later in life, oh, wait, you're supposed to start on the back and go forward. Yeah. I don't even remember what happened in that in that book. It was so long ago, and it was, like, the only one. It was, like, book number five in the series. I remember that. And I was I was like, what, is, what am I reading? This is this doesn't this doesn't seem right. He's, he's going backwards. And, of course, he's stupid just, me. He's just, like, walking backwards in time. Right. <laughs> But yeah, it, 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 it's it, it's interesting, you know. The art style is interesting for you know manga and anime, and I'm I'm not I love I you know I don't I don't really enjoy that. But people who do, they always they always they always go, yes, I love I love it. But like after like I read the um manga, the um the terrible manga, mm-hmm. I got more into like. Japanese video games like Kingdom Hearts and eventually anime like Hitalia and it was just all downhill from there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> why do you but, why do you say downhill? Well I I became like you know what a weeaboo is, right? Yeah, actually I was gonna ask you questions about that in a, in a minute. Yeah, I became one of those in middle school <laughs> because like I think was like Vocaloid. I I had an unhealthy obsession with Vocaloid, and I just I loved all the characters. I just thought, oh, these are just flawlessly singing people. <laughs> of course, they were people. They were synthetic voices, but right. I was twelve and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but. When I started taking Japanese in my high school, I grew out of the weeaboo-ness. And I began to just respect manga and anime as more of an art form. And I 
and I have like more interests in more like obscure artsy anime like Revolution Girl Lutena and um, Rosa Versailles rather than Naruto. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I know Naruto at least. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So what what's the main difference between a quote unquote weeaboo and a person who just you know enjoys Japanese culture and uh, Japanese uh, uh, cartoons and stuff like that? Um, I think I can basically sum this up in a conversation I once had with, like, a conversation I had a couple years ago with a 13-year-old girl who I'm pretty sure was a weeaboo. Okay. So, we were chatting over, like, breakfast, and she noticed my Sailor Moon keychain, which I got as a gift from a family friend, and she asked, like, oh, are you into Sailor Moon? And I said, well, yeah, I, I watch it every now and then. She proceeds to, like, ramble on about a lot of her favorite animes, which is a lot of, like, popular stuff I didn't watch, but I wasn't really minding it that much until mm-hmm. she said, oh, I love I love all of this so much that I must be half Japanese. <laughs> she was not half Japanese. Right. She looked nothing like a Japanese person. And later on, she just started to incorporate, like, random Japanese words into her dial- into, like, her conversations, and having finished my second year Japanese, that just made me feel incredibly uncomfortable. I bet, I bet. So, that's basically the difference. I- have you seen the, um, the Filthy Frank video about weeaboos? I've seen some of it. Okay. Um, do you think he n- goes too far with his criticisms, or do you think he hits the nail uh, the nail on the head? It's been a while since I've seen it, but from what I remember, it was a pretty accurate depiction of <laughs> the weeaboos I've encountered through school and other aspects of my life. Yeah, that's, that's probably... That's one of the videos that I point to when I go, this is this is Filthy Frank at his core. This is this is what he's all about. Of course other people would point to like the the snake fighting or whatever and the the, the, yeah. the rapping and all that, but you know R. I. P. Filthy Frank, I guess. I, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so let's get back to your YouTube channel. Um, so where did the name Flower Gothic come from and does it mean or or does it stand for anything? I feel like it was one of those words, this is where I just became my name rather than I was something and I thought the name was just an accurate representation of who I was. Because I made the channel when I was 10 and I thought, oh, Flower Gothic sounds cool and edgy. (laughs) So I just put that down as my name on YouTube and I kind of just like grew into the role later on because now I dress in mostly black with like some colorful accessories here and there. <laughs> <laughs> so how long how long have you been on YouTube and in total? Um, overall, I'd say about eight years, but I don't like to count the first three because most of those were Kingdom Hearts music videos. <laughs> I I, th- I think I saw that when I scrolled all the way down. I was like, Kingdom Hearts. Music videos? What? Yeah, <laughs> because that was like mostly what I watched back when I was 10 on YouTube. It was like Smosh and a bunch of Kingdom Hearts music videos. And I thought, oh yeah, that's what's going to get me popular. It did not get me popular. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it's it's amazing that you bring up Smosh because that was actually a topic that I was hoping that you would be kind of fluent in um, because I also grew up watching Smosh's old videos and I just want just a quick tangent I want to know do you still think that they make the same not the same but um do you still think that they make the same quality of content that they had no. they had no perfect oh my gosh someone who finally agrees with me <laughs> like here's here's I have a brother who's six years younger than me he like turned 12 a couple of days ago and he's a huge fan of Smosh now and occasionally I'll like look over his shoulder and just look at like whatever Smosh movie he's looking at like every whatever ever and I just think this isn't the same 
this is just exploiting something that's going on right now. This isn't like the smosh I knew and loved. Right. Yeah, I think the last video that I legitimately watched was, um, it was called like Every Church Ever. And I was like, what the hell am I watching right now? I didn't, I didn't even recognize most of the people on it. I'm like, where? Yeah. <laughs> where, where is Ian and Anthony? Who, who's this guy? Who's that guy? <laughs> And it's kind of sad because they they had something going there for a long time. For me, especially, it was just funny. Sketch comedy was their own. And now they have a production team. They have actors and actresses. And they have, you know, pretty much, what, what is it? Like, every other day they do a video. And it just, it lost that magic of being, like, special to them. And it's kind of like the movie, too. I watched the... Oh, my gosh. God rest my soul. I watched the movie. <laughs> and it was just like, oh, right in the heart. It was... It was like Shrek getting an arrow in the ass and then Fiona pulling it out. It was like the, oh, you know, the, the noise that he did. That, that's, that's exactly how I sounded when when the movie was. I don't, I don't know where I'm going with this. Please, please help me. <laughs> I, think I, I think I actually only recognize one other YouTuber in that whole movie, Markiplier, because I watched his videos a lot at the time the movie was released, which was when I was 14 or 15, I think. He had like a he had a minor role in that one, I think, right? He was just like Yeah. He, was he, there. he he like commented on some game that didn't look anything like a game because the production team couldn't do anything for shit. <laughs> well that's true. <laughs> so let's move away from channels that we had watched. What are channels that inspire you nowadays uh, um, to make content? Well, what originally got me interested in the whole reading a shitty fanfiction thing was this small channel called um, Man Without a Body. He's read dramatically some of the more infamous fanfictions like Minor Life and My Immortal. And that was what really inspired me to think, you know what? Why don't I like scout out some more terrible crap on fanfiction websites and just <laughs> see what I can find? So what is the difference between a good fan fiction and a terrible one that you would use for a video? Um, the thing about good fan fiction is that it either expands on its source material or is able to put its characters in an alternate universe while not altering their personalities. Like, oh, okay. There was this really good Kingdom Hearts fan fiction I read a couple years back. It was, it was basically supposed to be the Kingdom Hearts 3 by a fanfiction form, and I thought, oh wow, like it has all the world exploring and all the worlds tie into the main plot, mm -hmm. and no one is out of character. Nobody is real. Right. <laughs> this is amazing. But bad fanfictions tend to follow the same plot line roughly and just has like people acting out of their way for an original character that isn't much of a character hmm. like the current like fan fiction series that i'm working on which is is this queen adam lambert fan fiction right where yeah it's a, it's a teenage girl that gets adopted by adam lambert and it's been going on for 25 episodes now right yeah, about 25, yeah. That, that's and, it's insane. Is it is it like a long, very long fan fiction, or is it just like, since the videos are only about 15 minutes long each, you can only cover so much in each one? It was... Oh, so Are you okay? A, a hanging a hanging basket just fell in my, in the, in the, my work area, so that's awesome. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> but the original fan fiction is like 54 or 55 parts. Whew. And that's all. That, that's that's, that's, that's got to take a lot of time to type out. And from what I remember, it's not typed out very well. Yeah, it, it, it is not. Numerous grammatical errors. He days into the mic. He asks a statement. Oh, man. And she actually, like, unpublished it recently to quote unquote work on the grammatical issues and the plot issues I brought up, but 
that kind of just brings up like how people sometimes perceive my work because she thought that I was trying to ruin her life, which I was not. Mm-hmm. I I didn't really. I I respect her as a person. She seems like a nice girl, and she is. And I hope she improves one day. But she. How do I word this? She overreacted. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't actually had much of a conversation with her since I released part, what, part two of the story, but I really do hope the best for her, even if she thinks there's a quote-unquote stigma around her work because I thought it wasn't good. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people just can't take criticism well, and I think I think what you're doing is in, like, um, just kind of recreating it, I don't, I don't know if that's, like... Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't think I would be particularly angry if someone just randomly acted out a podcast that I did. It's like, okay, g- yeah. good job. I- but, <laughs> actually, I got a comment once on one of the older parts that basically asked, "How would you feel if someone did this to your own work?" And I just kind of thought, I'd be okay with it. Like they're they're enjoying it in their own way. Fuck it, muzzle right. talk. <laughs> At least someone's reading my work, right? Yeah, exactly! <laughs> I think you put a lot of work and effort into your videos, too. It really shows, because, you know, you're, you are ha- you have the, the little skits that you act out in between the parts that you just kind of read. And, I mean, one I think it was, like, number 23, you have the, the doll that just... You, and <laughs> Oh, yeah? I just, I love that part so much, how you just... I got up suddenly and the doll just disappears. I'm like, <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> it's just perfect. How long does oh, it usually yeah. take you to make one episode of, of this? Of Well, I guess, how long does it take to make any episodes in this series? Like, it, it, are some longer than others? Or or do you need to, you know, think of more ideas sometimes? How, how's that How's that process happen? Um, it's usually over the span of a couple days. I always do the readings first, because that's basically the base video. Right. And, and then I go edit. I splice out, like, my breath or any jokes that just I don't think are as good as they could have been because something you originally think is a good idea might not be a good idea when you look back at it oh, I, I hear you <laughs> yeah. and then and then I do like the reenactments in chunks like I'll usually do like for example I'll, I'll do the Queen Anne Lambert series as, as an example sure I'll do the reading of a chapter, I'll splice it up for breaths and stuff, and then I, and then like, maybe a day later I'll do all the mask scenes, and I'll use the doll if I need to, (laughs) and then I'll do the Ryan scenes and any other scenes that like require a wig last, especially if it like requires a different outfit, Mm -hmm. because on those like, I actually have to like, look the part, where on the mask is I just have a mask and I just need to sound like I'm excited or <laughs> we're, we're not British. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. So overall, I'd say it takes around like three days to a week depending on my schedule. That's not bad. Yeah. Um, are there any other disgruntled people that have come to your channel and just spewed I don't know, uh, mean comments or anything like that to you? Um, like, you're, not... you're disrespecting, you know, <laughs> my lively, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I recently made a video, like, about a week or two ago, of, where I addressed some indirect comments towards me for another fanfiction I read. The fanfiction based on the boy band, Why Don't We? Oh, because I think, I, think the... I saw that. Because, like, the author, like, indirectly responded on her Wattpad account saying, Oh, I've been receiving some hate recently, but I'm okay. And I'm just thinking, well, it could have been worse, but I'm not going to dwell on this. But I recently, like, revisited the comments and I just thought, Okay, this is... Some of these people don't understand why I do this. Right. So I just I just wanted to make a video that 
first of all explain like how I found the story in the first place, which was my friend Ashley recommended I did a fan fiction based on why don't we? Mm-hmm. Hers just happened to be the first that popped up. So she lost the lottery, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what what is that um why uh what was it called? Uh why why don't we? Yeah, what what is is that like a series? Is it a movie? Is it what what is that? It's this boy band. Oh, I think you said that. You just said that. I'm I'm <laughs> It's fine. <laughs> I I didn't know who they were either. Until like I googled it. <laughs> I, that's that's how most things get found out these days. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. That is true. So, have your parents seen the your videos or do they not know that this exists at all okay like my dad is actually a huge my dad and brother are actually huge fans of my work <laughs> i like actually like just today i was like telling my dad okay at about like six o'clock i because i live in central standard time mm-hmm. i've got to go do some youtube stuff so if you need anything just text me and he was like okay and sometimes like he'll talk to me about my videos so you'll think say like okay this one has this one has a little more cursing than like what i prefer <laughs> in my videos but you did a good job there my mom doesn't watch my videos but she knows i do i do this mm-hmm. and she just she doesn't care as long as i'm like not doing anything illegal <laughs> right yeah <laughs> She'll make a joke about it every now and then, like, Oh, Julia, are you going upstairs to read another fan fiction? <laughs> like, no, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. But my parents know about the channel, and they're they're pretty much cool with it. Well, that's good. Uh, I, I, I don't share my channel with my parents, but I think my dad has subscribed to me. So that, you know... I, I don't know if there's anything, like, terrible on this channel, but I know on my last channel I was doing a lot of voiceover work for, um, not, not for anyone, but for, like, I, I did voiceover of commercials and movies and stuff like that, and it got to some pretty weird places. Like, I had a Bob Evans video where I was just talking about meth the whole time, and that's, <laughs> like, that's probably something that I wouldn't want them to see, but this channel is okay, you know, I, I don't do too much out of the ordinary other than I swear a little bit more than I, well, actually, I swear 100% more than I would around them, so... <laughs> Hopefully yeah. they're okay with that. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you've recently had uh, one of your friends come and join you on the uh, Queen and Adam Lambert series. Oh, yes, Gabe. Gabe. Uh, how did yeah. you two meet, and, and how did it come that he came onto the, the channel? We know each other through high school. He's in the grade below me, and he was also... He also takes Japanese at my high school. Oh, okay. And he became friends with some of my friends, and we hit it off. He's a really talented artist. He hopes he can make a cartoon or comic series one day based on these characters he's made. Oh, cool. And we, and when I started doing the series, he thought it was absolutely amazing, and he he said he'd be like happy to like appear on it Mm -hmm. and after like i finished my exams i thought okay now's the time so i sent him a message saying hey gabe do you want to um show up and do some recording with me and he said yeah of course i'd love to so we met up one fateful day and we recorded about three parts of the story nice and then the footage got damaged so we had to meet up again the next day (laughs) that that sucks we actually recorded like a few more videos other than the um, Queen Adam Labor special, one of which is being released tomorrow, so Ooh. be on the lookout for that, gang. Well, this this podcast probably won't come out for another month, so it will be a little bit old by It will but... be out by now, and you would have seen it, and you would have liked it. <laughs> on, on, so on 623, go back in time. 623, yes. <laughs> uh, watch the video and then come back here. And <laughs> yes. So. W- I, I, I can't really understand what you're saying when you introduce him. You say, like, I'm not sure. I don't want to say it Gabe, wrong. Gabe Boy Me Bob. Gay Boy Me Bob. <laughs> where, where did that come from? 
Um, I came kind of from SpongeBob. Like sometimes I'll come like I'll come up with like nicknames for some of my friends that are just ridiculous references to oh, ridiculous references. and just references <laughs> to other other like shows or whatever like. In SpongeBob, Mr. Krabs will sometimes say "Sponge Boy Me Bob," and I uh. thought, "Oh, <laughs> Gabe Boy Me Bob." <laughs> Sponge that's, Boy Me Bob. That's great. As another example, like I have a friend named Nick, and I call him Snick, as in Saturday Night Nick. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> Saturday Night Nick. I- so does does he only appear on Saturday nights then, or? Sure, why not? <laughs> All right, last question for today. Uh, you've changed your hair color a few times throughout the career of your YouTube channel, of course. Is there one hair color that you've liked better than others? And is there one that you want, that you've been planning on doing, but you just haven't gotten around to it? I have, like, a few colors I've been wanting to do for a while. Like, I want to do brown eventually and yellow. Just not blonde, but yellow. Mm-hmm. The color I absolutely regret doing, though, was bunchery, because, like, I was still very reluctant to bleach my hair at the time, so they had, I had to, like, dye it over the red, and that just ended up looking horrific. <laughs> but that washed out after a week, so I was back to, like, red afterwards. But, I, I mean, usually I just don't really plan my next color until, like, I feel ready mm-hmm. for it. Like, I was actually originally supposed to go to go blue back in November, but the the dye didn't come in in time. So I thought, okay, I'll I'll stick with the bleached blonde color for now. And then I ended up not dying it until May. <laughs> well, that's interesting. I I've never. Well, I guess I have dyed my hair once. I I did green one green frosted tips for band once. And since my How'd hair, is, go? well, my hair is a dark color. It didn't really show up, so it just looks like I spiked my hair. But um, it was, you know, I, I think I have one picture of it, and it was you, just like you gotta get yourself that Backstreet Boys hair. <laughs> I know, I gotta, I got Ethan Klein my hair up with the frosted tips. Like I got, yeah. I, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still, ha- I'm hashtag bring frosted tips back. I, I am still hashtag bring frosted tips back because. I like well, that. nostalgia oh. rolls around every twenty years, so <laughs> that's what just I'm wait saying. Till the 20s. Yeah, <laughs> Pro- <laughs> I, I can see that happening. Yeah, I mean, Everessence is touring again. I mean, the Backstreet Boys released a new single. I'm, we're we're practically there. We're, we're we are practically at the doorstep of Frosted Tips. It just needs to just needs to be just open to years. crack more. <laughs> All right. Well, I just want to thank Flower Gothic for joining me on the podcast. Uh, all our links will be I'm down sorry. below. YouTube and Twitter. Is there anything else that you want to add before we we say sayonara? Um. Well, bye, y'all. I love you all already. Subscribe. <laughs> Subscribe to my channel. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Well, I am your host, Yummy the Ferret, and this has been another episode of the Ferret business podcast.